This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Donald Trump's first foreign trip to Saudi Arabia, Israel, the Vatican, Brussels, and now Sicily has been controversial, to say the least. And if I were to speak about all these different spots, I probably would have to speak for hours. I'd like to just concentrate on his meeting with EU officials and NATO officials in Brussels. And even there, I have to just limit myself to some highlights, because otherwise it still would be a long, long time. But I want to show you today what these meetings will bring into motion, because all of that is of significant biblical prophetic meaning. Now, to begin with, on May 24, Donald Trump met with two presidents of Europe, Mr. Tusk and Mr. Juncker, one being the president of the European Council, the other one being the president of the European Commission, something which could be confusing, which has been confusing to Mr. Trump. But here the point is that according to the EU Observer, dated May 25, this meeting did not appear to bridge the gap between the EU and the US president. And then also something else emerged during this meeting. Now again, some of the things I'm going to tell you now are not necessarily re reported correctly in the press, or some of the events and not necessarily of Mr. Trump's making, but the point is, perception is important. Here the Huffington Post wrote on May 25 that during this meeting, President Donald Trump said the Germans are bad, very bad. This is in accordance with an article by Der Spiegel. Trump's specific criticism was that Germany's auto industry exported cars. See the millions of cars they are selling in the United States, terrible. We will stop this. Now later, Breitbart clarified in an article dated May 26, quoting White House Chief Economic Advisor Gary Cohn, that Mr. Trump didn't say that the Germans are very, very bad, but that Germany's trade is very, very bad. And so the concept was, well, I, Mr. Trump, don't have a problem with Germans, because my father was German, but their trade is very, very bad. Now, first of all, by that time, many of the German papers had already reported Mr. Trump attacks Germany and saying that Germans are very, very bad. But even that comment regarding trade isn't something which the Germans are going to like. Bild wrote on May 26 that the relationship between the United States of America and Germany has never been worse. Never been worse. Now that says an awful lot if you think about the bad relationship which existed between Germany and Mr. Bush during the war in the Middle East. Now the next day, the Washington Post reported on May 25, President Trump spoke at a ceremony at NATO headquarters to dedicate a memorial to NATO's resolve in the wake of the 2001 terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. Now, before Mr. Trump spoke, Mrs. Merkel spoke, and she dedicated a portion of the Berlin Wall to NATO, and of course showing that the wall had to come down and that was good. Mr. Trump's position on walls is well known. But then Mr. Trump used the occasion to chastise NATO members. Trump reminded its members that 23 of the 28 member nations are still not paying what they should be paying and that they are supposed to be paying, and they owe massive amounts from past years. The article by the Washington Post wrote that European leaders who gathered from across the alliance gazed at Trump without expression and offered modest applause at the end of a speech. Now, Germany has already said, no way are they going to pay what Mr. Trump demands. They say that by 2024, perhaps, Germany will reach that goal of paying 2% of their GDP. And that would mean they would, they would be paying more in defense costs than Russia does. 
In addition, the Spiegel commented on May 25 that Trump's demand for payment of old money caused consternation of NATO members as there is no provision to pay missing funds into a NATO money pot. Then, of course, what was strongly reported and highly reported was a scene, and the EU Observer wrote about this on May 25, that Trump belittled Montenegro's Prime Minister, Dusko Markovic, by physically pushing him aside as the leaders took their places for photos. And of course, that was recorded on video, and that video is going viral on the internet. And so, if we just summarize the reporting by German newspapers regarding Mr. Trump's visit in Brussels, here is what we can say. German newspapers, including Der Spiegel, Der Stern, Bild, Die Welt, many others, Die Zeit, Süddeutsche Zeitung, you could add quite a few, and I've looked at them all, or most of them, they sharply attacked and condemned Donald Trump for his Rambo-style pompous appearance, his ignorance on trade matters, his refusal to commit to Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, because in his speech he didn't mention that Article 5 demands that if one NATO member is being attacked, all the others have to come to the rescue of that attacked member state, his demand for back pay, his attacks on Germany, his praise for King the king of Saudi Arabia as a wise man, and of course the problem is that one was, he had seen the king of Saudi Arabia, but nothing was said about the atrocious violations of liberty and freedom in Saudi Arabia, especially in regards to women. His praise for this king was not really taken too well. And then of course his comments that NATO needs to focus on terrorism and immigration. And so questions were raised, what does he mean by focusing on immigration? Are we supposed to go out now on the in the streets with machine guns and killing all those immigrants who are coming in? In other words, what is he talking about? Now, subsequently, according to the week dated May 25, Press Secretary John Spicer confirmed America's commitment to Article 5. And of course, this is again the pattern. Mr. Trump says something or doesn't say something. And then later his assistants, his spokespersons have to come up to try to explain what he mean or didn't mean by what he said or didn't say. Now, Deutsche Welle wrote on May 26, and this is extremely important for what I'm trying to get at. German Foreign Minister Spokesman Martin Schäfer said, that it could be a thorn in the flesh of the United States, that the EU is probably a stronger and more powerful trade block than the United States. Did you get that? The EU is probably a more powerful and stronger block when it comes to trade. And that's why President Trump is trying to negotiate treaties and trade agreements with individual EU members, and he can't do it. And he was told that by Angela Merkel when she was visiting Washington, according to newspaper articles, 11 times, that you can't do that. You can only make trade arrangements with the EU bloc. And of course, he doesn't like that. Now, all of this has to be seen in the light of the fact that Europe realizes we can't rely on America it looks like we can't really rely on NATO if these are the demands which are being made upon us, which we are not going to fulfill. So we have to come up with an alternative. And here is the alternative. The EU Observer wrote already on May 18 that EU states have cleared the way for a new military headquarters to take charge of joint defense. The EU defense ministers decided that deployment of EU battle groups in the field would in the future be paid for out of the EU budget and not by participating member states. If, and again, I would urge you to listen to this comment very carefully, if EU countries were to pool their military budgets, budgets, they would be the second biggest military spenders in the world after the United States. And the EU defense surge comes amid warnings that the US wants to spend less on European defense 
and of course also in regards to the departure of the UK from the EU. Now the Daily Mail added on May 18 that separately the European Commission will propose in early June up to 400 million euros from the bloc's joint budget until 2020 to develop new European military equipment and weapons. This is the first time in the 60 years of EU history that we are allocating common funds to defense, an official said. Now, if you're not convinced yet that Europe is coming together, that it is the goal of Europe to come together economically, politically and militarily, Listen to this comment by the British paper, The Guardian, published on May 23. Combining Europe's military forces under a joint command is the only way forward. Creating a fiscal union without a political union, and the idea is like a military union, would forever block the road to European unification. And that is almost prophetic. It's absolutely correct. We have said this for years, for decades. Europe will unite economically, politically and militarily. There will be a strong, powerful European army. You can take your money to the bank on that one. Excuse the expression. It's going to happen. The Bible prophesies it to happen. And we see now that Europe is merging towards this goal. Now. There is one more aspect, and that is that the Bible also says that it's going to be a Europe of two speeds. There's going to be core member states leading Europe. This is interesting in light of the new elections in France. The Express wrote on May 20 that new French President Emmanuel Macron is an advocate of closer EU integration. Macron backs a multi-speed Europe, an idea that has earned growing support in Germany and other EU countries since Britain voted to leave the bloc. And that's exactly how it's going to happen. And we have been writing several booklets and publishing several booklets on that issue. I'd like to just introduce to you our booklet on the 10 European revivals of the ancient Roman Empire. This booklet shows you from history and from biblical records and from biblical prophecy what did happen and what is going to happen. And what we have been discussing today is completely and totally in line with what the Bible says is going to happen in the not too distant future. I wonder how many of you realize how close we are to what the Bible calls the Great Tribulation. A time so bad it has never been that bad, it will never be that bad again. You should be awake and you should really looking into these events because they are of tremendous prophetic meaning and significance. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God. P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.